Hi, welcome to my kitchen. My name's Rose, and today we're going to be talking about granola. Now, I had a dear friend visit us, and she brought a basic granola recipe with her, but I felt like I wanted to add a little more flavor to it, so my daughter and I experimented quite a few times, and this is what we came up with. It's very basic, so you can add to it, you, but you have all of your basic components for granola. Some people pre-toast their oats, but I am not doing that with this. This is just very basic, very easy. So I have three cups of old-fashioned oats. You don't want to use the quick oats. You want to use the old-fashioned oats. And you need two cups of raw, sliced, or chopped nuts. Now, I have a son who has a tree nut allergy, so we always use almonds. And I like the slivered almonds. The reason you want to make sure they're raw is they're going to be baked. So if they are dry roasted or anything like that, they're going to burn. So I just dump in all the dry ingredients. Here is a half a cup of firmly packed brown sugar. Whenever you're working with brown sugar on your measuring cup, pack it down gently. Brown sugar is brown sugar because it has molasses in it, so it's moist. So you have to pack it down to get the accurate measurement. So the light brown sugar is going to have a little less molasses. It really doesn't matter which you use. Molasses is delicious, so you could use the dark. This is the light. And the other item that I'm adding is whole wheat flour. Now this is a quarter of a cup. If you are trying to do a gluten-free version, just omit the flour. You don't have to have the flour, but it does add to the granola. The other dry ingredient is a teaspoon and a half of ground cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Now I use kosher salt in my baking and my cooking. I think kosher salt has a lot more flavor so it's just what I will always use. And it's not expensive, so I have a dish of it on my stove all the time, and I use it in baking. So you're gonna wanna make sure to mix all these ingredients really well before you add the wet ingredients. We like it on yogurt. Um, I add it to pancake batter with applesauce, and it's really delicious that way. Um, you can just have a bowl of it. Um, sometimes if after it bakes, you don't break it up so much, you get big chunks, you can just have it for a snack. So that's pretty well tossed. So I'm going to go ahead and add the wet ingredients. You're going to add a third of a cup of vegetable oil. Now, some people, if you have safflower oil, or I, I don't know about canola oil, but just a, an oil that doesn't have a lot of flavor. You wouldn't want to add something like olive oil to it. Then I have a half a cup of pure maple syrup. You don't want to use any of the pre-jarred maple syrup that has corn syrup or anything like that in it. And you can buy just a generic form of pure maple syrup and it's not as expensive. So you just add that in there. And isn't everything better with maple syrup? And then a teaspoon of vanilla. Now when you're baking, always use pure vanilla. Don't use the imitation. It doesn't have the same flavor. I know vanilla is expensive, but it's one of those ingredients that's worth the expense. So basically, I'm just really coating this, making sure it's all stirred together. Now I have a cookie sheet here. Now I've chosen to use nonstick foil. It's one of my best friends because then I don't have to spray the cookie sheet and I don't have to worry about it getting stuck because halfway through the baking I need to be able to toss it and if it's stuck to the cookie sheet it just makes a mess it makes for burnt pieces so you're just going to go ahead I'm just going to give it one more stir okay I'm going to go ahead and distribute it on the cookie sheet make sure not to leave anything behind So go ahead and distribute it evenly on the pan. Now a lot of people like to have dried fruits in there and so what I would suggest is if you want to add raisins or any dried fruit, you can put it in the last five minutes or even just stir it in afterwards because you don't want that fruit to burn. So basically this is going to go in a 300 degree oven. If your oven runs a little hot, put it at 275. It goes in for 20 minutes, take it out, give it a stir and put it back in for 15 and check it. The recipe says for 40 minutes total, so 20 and 20, but I like to check it at 15 minutes because if it's getting too brown, then you want to take it out. But the recipe does say to go 20 minutes with the granola and then you just take it out. I let it cool a while before I toss it around because we like the big chunks. 
So you go ahead and let it cool completely, which would be a couple of hours on top of your stove or wherever, and then you can put it in a sealed container and it's good for a really long time. So give this recipe a try. It's so simple and enjoy. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for coming to my kitchen.